Hi, today I'm doing a video which is reviewing a product that I've been sent by the Paul Rubens Watercolour Company. It's a set of 24 watercolours in this beautiful box. And here's the box itself. And I'm going to be testing them, doing colour swatches and working on a few botanical illustrations using them. And at the end, I'll share my thoughts on how well these paints work. Hope you enjoy the film. Here we are then. I've just received this package through the post from Rubens and it should be my exciting new set of watercolours and some watercolour paper from them. So I'm going to unwrap it. Oh, this is exciting, look at that! So here's the watercolour paper that they would like me to try. And here is the box of watercolours. So I'm going to un 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 take off the plastic and I'll get back to you. Exciting. So here's the paper and I've taken it out of its packet. It's come very carefully packaged. And well, there's no point in even showing you the texture. It'll be interesting to try. Um, but is it smooth enough for what I do? Quite probably not. But I will certainly give it a go. It feels like it's quite high quality anyway, that's for sure. And here is the paint box. This is so pretty. Look at the packaging on that. It's gorgeous. Whoops. So if I take this off. Oh my goodness, look at this. Unfurl it. Oh, it's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Tip it out. Oh, it's even got one of those things that you can, you know, put your finger under. Let's open it. Oh, it's got nice space for mixing. Oh, this is tasty. I feel like a child in a sweet shop. What have we got? We got, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to do swatches of these. Naples yellow, that's really important to me. Yep, and that one is as well. That looks like a, um, a yellow ochre. We've got some reds and some blues. Black, I don't use black so much. What about the greens? This is going to be exciting. I'm going to do a swatch of this. This is absolutely beautiful. Look at it. It's even got like a soft cloth with it. Oh, look, it's got a little thing all about it as well. Oh, there we go. Explaining to me what I've got and how to use it. Oh, I'm very excited about this. I'm just unwrapping the paints from their paper coverings. See, I'm nearly there, but I did want to just take a moment to show you how much easier they are to unwrap than um, many other paints which are wrapped in plastic and then in paper. Uh, so, this one is a turquoise, and look, if you just turn it over on its back, there you go. And this is a plasticky cover, so I'd prefer it if it was paper, but still. Um, and that's it, and there's the paint just like that. And you pop it in and there's no cellophane wrapping or anything like that. I've prepared a colour swatch chart using the uh, cold pressed paper that I've been given. All the names are here along with all the information about whether they're colour fast and what their official colour is, all that kind of thing, transparency. The names are very new to me, a lot of these. Um, I should imagine things like earth yellow are what I call yellow ochre. May green, I'm thinking is probably a sap green. Some are the same, like cadmium yellow light, recognise that one, cadmium red light. Um, but yeah, it's interesting that they're called very different things. French blue, I'm guessing is French ultramarine. Anyway, once I come to test them, we'll see. I just also wanted to show the layout of the box. So in fact, now I've put all these paints back in, you can see they, they come out in this way. Each one is held in place, which makes cleaning very easy. And here's the box. And you just slot, oops, you just slot that in and you're ready to go. So that's um, very user friendly. I've drawn up my colour swatch with all the names written out. And the brush I'm going to be using is a Windsor and Newton Series 7. It's a number four. It's a sable brush. Um, I actually tend now to use a different sort of brush. A velvet touch by Princeton brushes but I don't have a big one of those so I'm using a little one. Oh just look at this paint box. So because we don't we want to work from light to dark I'm going to start by testing this one which calls itself Naples yellow which looks like a Naples yellow 
and the logos under that's slightly annoying but it's right so it's quite a solid color let's see what it looks like oh that's going down nicely okay what about if i dilute it i'm going to zoom in on each of these so you can see what's going on I mean, if I add water to it, how pale does it go and how translucent? It's not grainy, that's for sure. I thought it might be grainy. I normally use um, Winter and Newton or De La Rowney. So I've heard of Rubens watercolours, but this set that I've been given to try, it's the first time I've ever actually used them. Um, I like it. On the screen, I do need to point out that on this screen, it does seem to me a little like the colours aren't entirely true but that's modern cameras for you okay so that's Naples yellow the next one I'm trying is the next one up which is equally like this is lemon yellow okay let's try that again that's a nice bright colour I like that and if I dilute it it's still holding its colour really nicely it's not at all grainy which is lovely actually Okay, so Naples Yellow and Lemon Yellow, like both of those. Cadmium Yellow Light, next one. Hmm. Is it slightly... No, it's not chalky. It's quite good. Yeah, nice bright yellow. I wonder how fade resistant they are. It does say on these labels. And they seem to be all... They claim to all be fade resistant. And there's some brilliant um, botanical illustrators who do tests to see how fade resistant paints are. I'm not one of them, I'm afraid. So. But it dilutes nicely. That's that's really, yeah, really nice. Right. Chromium yellow, deep. So I'm working up the... Now, I normally, these days use a um, special mixing brush but because I'm doing this colour swatch like this I'm not doing it so this is chromium yellow deep hue no it's not hue deep hi my name's hue hue deep right chromium yellow hue deep it's a nice solid colour that's um, like the trumpet of a daffodil or something isn't it okay. I'm trying to keep these colours as true to life I haven't got any um, artificial light on in the studio it's a dull day in March in Britain um, so this is just daylight this is flat daylight no sunshine okay so that fades out as well that's quite nice I like that the chromium yellow deep chromium orange hue that looks like a bright orange let's see Oh, that's a nice colour. Do you know what? I don't think that I've got a colour like that in my um, in my Winter and Newton box. I'm sure they do one, but I haven't got it. That's pretty. And does it go all wishy-washy when you pull it out? No. Nice. Those two together, the last two I've done, be really good for like... um pot marigold uh, okay I've skipped to the other side of the chart to test out the earth yellow yeah which is clearly very very similar to a um, to a yellow ochre so what I'm going to do after doing my test of this colour swatches is I will do a painting using these and I will use this earth yellow as I do with my yellow ochre to kind of knock back the brightness of the greens and we'll see whether or not it manages that but it's a nice color it's nice nice and warm okay cadmium red and light at this point i'm trying very hard not to put my brush in what i've already painted <laughs> so you have to hold your brush up from the wrist that's nice that's very that's redder than my um winter and newton one but it's a good color and diluting it down 
I mean, I shouldn't be surprised, but these paints do seem to behave pretty much exactly like my normal paints do, which is gratifying and which is encouraging as well. Okay, yep, dilutes that very nicely. Perilene Maroon. These all sound like the names of 1930s, um, 1930s ne'er-do-wells in speakeasies. So here's the Perilene Maroon. Again, this is a colour I've never even heard of before, let alone used, so I'm quite excited by it. Come on, Perilene, what are you going to give me? Oh my days, look at that. It's kind of like an alizarin crimson. That is a delicious colour. Oh, I'm very pleased with that one. Okay, dilute that one out. I wasn't expecting to find totally new colours, but of course I'm going to, aren't I? I like that. Can you imagine that for the for the working into the shadows of a red rose? I think I would. Oh yeah, that's really nice. The Perilene Maroon. Really like that one. That's gorgeous. Okay, next one. Quinacridone. 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 I feel like I'm learning a foreign language. Quinacridone. Quinacridone, I assume. So this is the quinacridone. Quinacridone rose, this one is. So let's see how different it is from Perry. Quinacridone rose. Oh, that's nice as well. It's pinker, isn't it? It's pinker than the perylene. Quinacridone rose, quinacridone rose. I do not suppose. Right, that's lovely. Yep. These colours are really pretty, you know. I'm excited by them. They're very bright. They're, um, yeah, they've got real, real pow. This one, especially the quinacridine rose. Now, quinacridine maroon, I'm assuming. It's a fourth down. Hold on. One, two, three, four. This one. I'm assuming it's going to be something like an opera pink, but maybe not. Something like an opera rose, not an opera pink, sorry. Quinacridine maroon, let's see. Oh my goodness, that is such a useful colour. It's much pinker than um, an alizarin crimson, that one is. That is a lovely colour. And if we dilute it out... get to a really delicate sensitive pale pink which is going to be absolutely invaluable for botanical illustration that's a really nice one I like that that's one of my favorites so far dioxazine violet that's the third one down take two dioxazine violets take two dioxazine violets and call me in the morning if it hasn't cleared up okay let's see what dioxazine violet is a lot of these have parallels, of course they do, with the colours that I'm more familiar with. That's a nice look. That's a very blue purple, isn't it? Oh, that's gorgeous. Do you know what? When they said, would you test this paint box for me? I sort of thought, oh, how flattering. Oh. And I thought, yeah, of course I will. But it didn't really cross my mind that actually I might end up considering that this paint box might be a genuine alternative to my normal paint box but maybe I will I'm not sure maybe I'm a bit of a convert I mean I think the price point of Paul Rubin's watercolours is a little cheaper than Winter and Newton that's nice that purple is indigo that's the next one up here that's a nice dark Blue, that's like a Payne's Grey. Oh, that's a lovely colour. Dilute it and see what it looks like in dilution. <laughs> Can you hear the jackdaws in the background? All coming into roost at the end of the day. Okay, 
This is also, I'm also, bear in mind, working on cold-pressed paper, which I don't normally do. This is the um, Paul Rubin's cold-pressed watercolour paper. So I haven't yet discovered whether or not it holds edges. Uh, this is French blue, which I'm assuming is French ultramarine. It looks a whole lot like, God, that's a bright colour. <gasps> that's lovely. OK, let's go in with the French blue. Ooh, look at it glow on the page. Nice. Uh, how does it move? The thing with French ultramarine is I'm always very um, specific about my French ultramarine because if I'm doing landscapes, which I do every now and then, often you need to do all the sky at once. So that paint has to be very flexible and mobile. I'm not sure how flexible and mobile this one is, but it's a very nice blue. I like that. Oh, curses. There we are. Mmm, nice. I'm going to keep doing the blues. So the next one to try is this one who calls himself Berlin Blue. That's a nice colour. That's a nice rich colour. They're very, um, they're smooth to use actually, the paints are. They're nice to, they're nice to mix from the box. That's lovely. Yeah, it's a bit like a Prussian blue, which I guess would make sense. Prussian blue, Berlin blue, same neck of the woods, Austria, Germany. Not a million miles apart, are they? Were the Prussians from Austria? Oh, now I'm going to show my lack of knowledge. It's all the Habsburg Empire, isn't it? Is it? Oh, I should have checked my history before I started making this film. Okay. Okay, so that's, that's a nice colour. I like that one. So far, I haven't been disappointed by any of these colours. I'm um, interested in what the May green is going to hold there. This one here is Pthalo blue. Pthalo. I wonder if you're meant to pronounce it Pthalo. And that one glows as well. I look forward to um. I look forward to doing a botanical illustration with these. I'll do a time lapse, um, and we'll see whether it looks noticeably more rubbish than my normal stuff or not i doubt it will and if it does it'll be me probably not these paints yeah, okay okay sallow blue liking that turquoise now you know that i'm a sucker for a good turquoise let's see what this one has in store for me oh okay it's greener than i thought it was going to be okay it's not a problem it's just worth noting Translucent turquoise we're on now. I would say, which you can tell from the blues, never believe that the paints are the same colour as their wrappers, because they're not. I've mainly kept these wrappers for information on colour light, colour fastness, um, and whether they're meant to be translucent or transparent or opaque. Um, and also... One of my friends once told me there's a, a number that goes with each colour and that's how you can tell what exact colour it is. It's Mary Elena who told me that. So this one, for example, is PB16. There you go. And probably if I had kept the wrappings of all of my paints, every single turquoise that's exactly the same colour as that would be PB16. 16. At least that's what I understand. Oriental green. I'm not changing my water quite yet. Whoops, over here. This is the oriental green. Okay, that's an interesting green. It's sort of um sort of like a Windsor green, but less bright, less less in your face. Okay, oriental green. Down it goes. Yeah, it's very much like a, a it's like my Windsor green yellow hue. I would say. And the paint moves nicely on the page. And it looks nice in dilution as well. Ah, oh, this is the one I'm excited about trying. May green. 
I thought it was going to be like a sap green, but take a look at that, ladies and gents. That ain't no sap green and what it is. Never seen, never seen a colour like it in my all my days. It's a very bright yellow green. Okay. May green. Oh. Okay. It's not a very nice colour, but that's not its fault. It might be useful. Actually, it's a mixer for um for spring leaves. Or for bright green leaves. That's no bad thing. And I'm assuming when we dilute it, it'll be very yellow. It's slightly reminiscent of... Yeah, very yellow. Um, it's slightly reminiscent of... If you miss mixed a... If you mixed a gamboge with a sap green, perhaps. Or like a... Um, or like a Daniel Smith spring green. But it's, it's brighter than that. It's yellower. Okay. Co cobalt, turquoise, dark. It's the next one up. It's this one. Cobalt turquoise dark. Oh, that's an interesting green now. Now that automatically, unmixed, is making me think of yew, yew trees. The needles of a yew tree are almost exactly that colour on top. That's a nice colour. It says for the transparency of this full coverage, which I suppose probably means it's pretty opaque. Cobalt turquoise dark. I don't like it in dilution so much. But in its darkest form, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I don't like that one so much. What about olive green dark? Olive green dark. Ooh! Now that's a tasty colour. Look at that. Okay. Olive green dark. Oh my goodness, that is a go-to green. That is definitely a go-to green, a base green for mixing. Take that and you'd add a bit of lemon yellow light, a little bit of yellow ochre, or in this case, earth yellow, and that would cover a thousand greens. Oh, it's pretty. Yeah, that's a really nice green, olive green dark. Beautiful. Earth yellow we've done. Burnt Sienna, so we're back on the reds now. I'm going to have to make sure I really rinse my brush. Here we are. This is a colour I love. This one again, um, the stems of a juniper. Very much based on Burnt Sienna. They're very transparent, that's beautiful. Some similar to Winter and Newton light red, but not quite the same. Diluting it out. Nice. Yeah, that's a nice colour. Nice for stems. Yep, like that one. Venetian red. People talk to me about Venetian red and I never really know what they mean. I never get the feeling I should know my subject matter a little better where should we got we still got here oh that looks very familiar that looks um similar oh no that looks more like the light red yeah that's more like the light red that i was talking about the winter and newton do you know what these colors are really vibrant they really are i will show you in a minute this movie is going to be way too long my films are always too long somebody come and teach me how to edit um i'll show you afterwards my rather beaten up colour palette for my current paint box and you'll see it's not going to be entirely fair because it's laminated whereas this one isn't. Two more to go, brown, amber and ivory with black. I wouldn't be touching the black normally. So this is the burnt umber which is always a kind of slightly greenish brown. It's a nice colour, I like brown umber or burnt umber as I'd probably call it. That's a very nice. See, I mean, who needs a black if you've got that? Mix that with a little bit of blue and you've got a far richer colour than any pre-mixed black would give you. Beautiful. And the last one is ivory black up here. 
It's a blackety black black, just a straight. I suppose it's meant to be neutral, isn't it? Then you have ivory black. Always amused me ever since the word go. Ivory black. What? Okay. The um the history of where different pigments come from, I'm not gonna get into it now. There's a brilliant book about it called Colour by I think Alison Finley, <clears throat> where she travels the world seeing the places where different artist pigments and clothes dye pigments and things originally came from. Absolutely fascinating. In Victoria times there was a colour called Mummy Brown that literally, genuinely, was made from the ground up bones of Egyptian, ancient Egyptian mummies. Nice. Right, there we go. I'm going to zoom out now. Oh, that's gratifyingly pretty, isn't it? Look at that. Now, what I was going to say, here you go, there we go, that looks pretty as well, is look, if we compare it to this, which is my current, there are definitely some parallels. So in amongst the yellows, cadmium yellow pale, I think the this one is a bit brighter, and the lemon yellow is brighter, although this is a bit grubby, so it's a bit hard to... Cadmium red, mm, similar. Yeah, and so your quinacridones are in amongst your... They're like your permanent carmines and your alizarins. The yellows are brighter and lighter, which is interesting. Oriental green is indeed like my Windsor green. Um, the purple is like my Windsor violet, the dioxazine violet. In a go, it's like, where's our Prussian blue one? Yeah, Berlin blue, Prussian blue, very similar. But the May green is like nothing I have. Closest is sap green. Um, I guess olive green is it's not like the oxide of chromium. Venetian red is like light red, yeah, definitely. Naples yellow is a Naples yellow, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's uh, just as many colours to work with here as here. And... I mean, this is maybe not entirely fair because this was done a while ago, but these colours look incredibly vibrant and bright. Um, so the next thing for me to do is to do a time-lapse botanical illustration using these colours rather than my own. And we will see whether or not it makes any difference to the final piece. So I've finished my review of the Paul Rubin's 24 colour watercolour set and I've got to say I'm really impressed. So the initial packaging, the box, is beautiful. The little cloth, the brandy cloth that came in with that I'm going to use for probably cleaning my glasses with. Inside the box there was also this which I didn't realise is actually a place on which you can do your swatch colour tests. There's information about the paints there and when I did my own colour swatch you can see the colours are very bright, which I really like. Um, and when I used them, they work just as well as my normal watercolours, which are Windsor and Newton. They mixed well, um, and they, they're nice and bright and translucent mostly. The box itself is very nice with a little thing on the back. And you open it up. The wells aren't as deep as what I'm used to, but that's not a problem. And the paints are beautiful and they're very easy to use. So mixing them was no problem at all. Um, and the colours were bright. And in fact, the illustrations like this one that I did with the Rubin's paint box, I can't tell the difference between the paint here 
and my normal ones. So I really am genuinely impressed. And not just because they gave me a box of paints for free, honest. Um, I believe that the company is going to provide me with a discount code, which if you look in the write up below the video should be there. So if you want to buy yourself a box, try them out and also leave information feedback for me in the comment section, that would be great. And these sets are available from Amazon US and also from Amazon UK. The other thing that they gave me to test was this cold press paper, which I haven't really got around to using very much yet. Um, but I will do and I'm sure that'll be nice, but I normally use hot press. But yeah, as a as a review of the Paul Rubens watercolour box, all I can say is I am actually very impressed and I am actually going to be using these as an alternative to my Winsor Newtons probably quite often. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Visit my website, lizzieharper.co.uk to see more of my work, buy originals, read blogs and other resources. Um, and thanks also to Paul Rubens for giving me the opportunity to test your product. Thank you. See you next time.